All right, Nathan Cox here. Guys, we're going to do a shower faucet install today. Um, I'm going to start all the way from the unboxing of this product. Now, I have to put a warning on this video right away. If you're not mechanically apt, if you're not used to doing uh, plumbing, if you are one of those guys or girls who, who fix something like a drain pipe under the kitchen sink or bathroom sink, ends up leaking, if you're one of those people that's a constant kind of a problem, this is not this is not the project for you, okay? Uh, this is a more advanced project. So, uh, please, if you're not, you know, very handy at all, you're not good with mechanical things, refer this to your local plumber and let them do it for you. Now, for the rest of you who uh, maybe just, you know, you're pretty good with the plumbing and mechanical stuff and you've never really done a shower faucet before, you want to see how to do it, you know, what, what are the tips and what are the reasons for doing certain things? Well, stay with me here and I'll walk you through it. Now, I've got a remodel project here. You can see behind me, I'm sitting on a, just a steel tub, a uh, new steel tub. This is a very old bathroom. You can see the lab mortar over here behind me, all the slats and stuff. Uh, we have a small build out here where the faucet's going to go. Um, this house has mostly galvanized uh, steel pipes, but does have some pipes. Um, so you'll see why um, I run it certain ways. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So I can talk there forever. This video gets forever long. All right. You can see this box had not been opened yet. We are doing a true unboxing here. Okay, right here we got. You're gonna have lots of little bags inside here. Uh, we got a little trim cover, uh, trim plate for the shower head, uh, a big washer, some screws for the main trim plate, and a plastic cap. Okay, now this shower faucet is from Delta. Let me go back here. It is their classic model. Uh, that's actually the name of it. I thought it had a fancier name than that. Uh, this is for a tub shower unit. Now, if you only have a shower, you can still use this, even though it's for a tub shower. And I'll, I'll show you in the coming minute here what to do about that. It's a really easy thing to take care of. Okay, uh, this one here also has the chrome and acrylic handle choices. So you got the acrylic cap there. All right, so that's the side. Here's your little handle trim plate. Uh, here's the main faucet trim plate. Okay, obviously the spout for the shower head, an Allen wrench with a set screw, uh, that's going to be for one of the handles, a uh, tub spout, shower head, acrylic handle, okay, the metal chrome handle, here's our cartridge, and then here is the actual faucet, you know, actual faucet itself, okay. Now it comes with this build-out uh, box here, um, so that the basically, whenever you see these, whether it's a square one or a round one, this helps to help you line it up. Now I've got enough of these, I kind of know where they come out at, but you want the part of the, the faucet where the handle is coming out of the wall at proper length. You know, you don't want to, you know, coming out too far, being way back in there, and then you've really messed up. Uh, but you, you barely set, you basically set this to work with your finished wall, okay? So that that's flush, that's how most all of them work. You can always double check your instructions uh, for the individual units themselves, okay? All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started in working with the main faucet body here. Um, now, when a plumber talks about replacing a faucet, some people, when they hear that, it's regular people, they think, you know, the shower head and trim plate and then, the, you know, the trim plate and the faucet handle, stuff like that. But this is what they're talking about, the main faucet along with the cartridge that goes in it, okay? Because even though you can replace the cartridge, it comes to a point many, many, many years down the road where the brass and stuff like that just wears out. It gets pitted, corroded. Um, anyways, so brand new faucet here. Now, these little build-out guys not only pop off, he's got little clips on them. I'm going to pop it off because you got to get it out of the way. We can put it back on later when it's time to mount the faucet into the wall. All right, now on the deltas, the moments don't, they have their wings in different place. You see this is a mounting plate on the back. It's got the little up and the arrows. Um, there are two Phillips, Phillips head screws on the top and we're gonna take this out. Cause it's just in the way right now, it just is. But do not lose it or the screws because you absolutely need that to properly mount it in the wall, okay? Because now there's no, there's no screw flanges or anything. Okay, but there is still an up right here. You gotta pay attention to that because well, this ain't gonna work if we do it the wrong way. 
Alright, now how I'm going to do this is I'm going to run the water lines, the cold and the hot water lines, in as PEX, okay? So I'm going to put PEX adapters on here, and then you're going to have the, uh, the line going up to the shower head here, and then the line going down to the tub spout here, okay? Uh, pretty simple, uh, but I'm running two different types of uh, plumbing connectors, obviously. I'm going to stick with the, uh, the galvanized steel pipe. I'm actually just kind of an old fan of that. Um, I never spent a lot of time soldering with copper. Uh, there is a slip on the inside here where you can feed copper in here and solder this. Just make sure that, you know, there's no, the cartridge is out and there's no other O-wings or anything else on there because if you're going to solder this, um, you're going to destroy anything that's not brass. Okay, brass or copper. I'm going to put that back on there. Okay, if you notice there, I did both of them at the same time. Okay, having this brass body, you've got to realize that brass is softer than the galvanized steel. So, you don't really want to clamp the pliers on the faucet body. That, that's really not that good to do. So what you want to do is work on both sides, opposite of each other at the same time. Okay, there you go. Now, like I said, pay attention to the up. This is up right here, so this is going up to the shower head. This is going down to the faucet. It would have been nice if I had my pliers ready, but they're in the other room, of course. Okay, your slip joint pliers are going to be what you use mostly on this project. I do have some pipe wrenches, which we'll use to help kind of snug it in, snug it way up at the very end. But most of the initial work will be done with these guys right here. Now, I personally know that that's good on tight. Oh, you probably saw my face. Don't you get red? That happens to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I personally know that that's tight enough. Um, it gets to a point where you just really get it bent down there tight. Do remember, the brass is softer than the steel, so don't go crazy. But you will, you should, your, your fitting should go over, over three quarters of the threads. It should be more like almost 90% of the threads should have disappeared from sight. Um, that's generally a good way to gauge it, okay? So, up and down. Now let's do the left and right, which is our water supplies. Okay, so here's the basic part of our faucet right here now with our galvanized couplers on there and our PEX fittings. So what we're going to do now is we're going to... You need to know where your faucet's going to go because we're going to attach the pipes going up and down on this guy right here. So let's, let's go get those. All right, so guys, this is kind of more how it's gonna look. Um, but this is just put together so you can see how tall it is on the wall. It's a good thing to do. So I don't have no thread tape or paste on yet. If you guys are curious, what I personally use in this shower, um, which I, I kind of use a lot, is a four and a half feet on top and eight inches on the bottom. But before we attach these to the faucet uh, body, the main faucet itself, let's go ahead and take these off now that you've sized that up and you figured out which size you need and you got all your pipes ready, is let's put, because both of these are going to need elbows on them. All right, we'll need an elbow on both. So let's attach those to the pipe first and then get those really just cranked down in place. Now here's the uh, kind of tricky part here, being that these are threaded, is you need to try to land the front of the elbow, you know, where it would face straight out, right in with the, you know, the faucet opening right here. Um, sometimes it's a little bit pain in the butt to get them lined up just right. So as you're getting it tight, pay attention to how tight it's getting and know, okay, are you going to be tight enough here with this turn? Or do we need to go one whole more turn and can you do one more whole turn before it just stops? So we have the pipe going up to the shower head. We have the pipe going down to the tub spout. Now let's set up some water lines. Faucet all the way from the tub spout to the shower head and the water lines. And you see she's going to fit right in there. And like I said, I've got room for where those elbows are on the pecs. So what we need to do is you need to put this in place and we get someone to help you or not line it up height wise okay um, now we want to center it with the with the tub um, now if you're doing a shower only 
you might figure out exactly where you want to put it in that. With this being a tub, there is a drain hole here. And the center of the drain hole is going to line up left and right with the center of the faucet handle, okay? Now as far as up and down, get someone to hold it up there and get the exact place, mark it. And you need two boards mounted in here. A 2x4 is fine, 2x6 is good too. Cut it to fit one here for the shower faucet and the one up higher which is going to go just a few inches below where your elbow is for your shower head which keeps this pipe from shaking around in there when you're grabbing the shower head and, and twisting it all around. Okay, so we want two boards cut and put in here. So I better get these boards cut and get them in here. Okay, as you can see here I've already got uh, my mounting beam in place, you call it cross beam, whatever you want to call it. Um, I use a 2x4, it's right up in here. Uh, I've already measured horizontally height where I'm going to mount the faucet. Now, far as depth, okay, that's an important thing. Now that is where this little build out piece kind of comes in handy. Uh, you can snap back on the faucet and then measure, depending on the thickness of the wall, what it's going to be, the finished wall. You know, whether you're doing a um, tile or a surround or some kind of fiberglass kit. Okay, so you kind of try to figure out where the finished wall is going to be. Now, I will tell you generally, okay, this isn't every time, but generally, if you have a 2x4 wall, whether you're using a 2x4 or a 2x6, you know, you know, lay it so it's up like this, and if you make it flush with the back side of the 2x4 stud, it generally lines up about right with most walls. Um, it's a pretty general good rule of thumb right there. I already know where this one's going to be, so I don't need that. I've already got everything marked and figured. Let's just mount the thing, okay? Now, like I said, if you're installing the same exact faucet or another delta faucet just like it, don't forget to put the mounting bracket back on. Those two Phillip head screws on top, make sure they're good and snug, okay? Because you don't want this thing coming loose down the road inside the wall, okay? Make sure they're good and snug. And then there's places for two screws to mount this puppy in place. Um, you know, you'll see them real easy. They're the ones on back. Don't confuse them with the tabs up front, which hold the main trim plate in place. Okay? I've also got the, um, the cross beam up there uh, that's going to hold the shower head support up here. So we'll start with down here because this is what's going to be mounted solid in. So have yourself a drill and a screw ready. Inch and a quarter screw is more than sufficient if you're using a 2 by you know, dimensional lumber beam here. Now I do have the vertical line marked also so I know how far left and right to put this. That's important to have that done before you get here. So I have that marked down here and up above. Alright. Careful about letting that flop around too much. Now you can line this up, make sure it's pretty well, you know, level, or plumb, I should say. Because if you've already marked up there, just get your pipe right over your mark, and let's set the other one here. Okay, don't go crazy there. It's still going to have a little bit of movement if you grab it from this pipe because there's a lot of leverage there. So what do you do? Well, obviously the next thing we do is uh, put some kind of a strap or a bracket up there. Now today with me, I just happen to have these little kind of like half clamp open. Some people call them an eel claw. They've got a, a nail stuck in them already. So you can use the little metal, you know, half brackets with the two screws to go in. You just need something to get it in there and keep it in place. These are a half open plastic bracket. I do like to use two of them, one facing opposite direction from the other one. Um, and then, <coughs> excuse me, also on the beam up here, as far as mounting it depth wise, this one um, can be a little bit closer up front than, say, your, your bottom one that's holding the actual faucet body. But see, now everything is solid and still, and that's how it should be. So now let's go back down to the faucet. If you have old galvanized lines, um, 
that's pretty much going to be it. You probably got a lot of sediment and mineral deposits and etc. etc. inside those pipes, the rest, and you need to get that flushed out. So before you put the cartridge in, you want to go ahead and flush this out. So basically, it's really helpful if you have two people. You're going to want one person where the water shuts on and off at, and one person standing here with like some big bucket, five gallon paint bucket or something, a large bucket to catch the water. So you don't want the cartridge in because those minerals will hit this thing and make a mess. So, how to do that? Real simple. Have someone here to catch the water because it'll be blasting right out of the center of the faucet and someone to turn it on. Have them turn it on. It's going to come out real nasty, dirty, rust and rock looking things and dirt. It's, it's really just minerals and deposit and rust. Okay? Now let it run after the water clears up. Let it run for another half a minute or so after that. Make sure it's good and cleared out. Have the other person turn the water off. Okay? Alright guys, here we are back. We can see that the shower is almost complete along with the entire bathroom model. It's been a little while. We are ready to finish the assembly of the shower faucet. Put the finishing touches onto it, okay? And you can see here, I already got the shower cartridge in. I, uh, you know, last part here we had the, sh the shower faucet was installed in the wall before the walls went up. Do do the pressure test. Make sure to put the cartridge in and test and do a pressure test with the water on so you make sure you got no leaks before you, you ring any further. It's very important that you do a proper pressure test. Uh, putting the cartridge in is as simple as just sliding it in and then screwing this ring on. This ring you don't have to crank down. You do not have to, okay? It holds the cartridge in place. The O-rings on the inside are what seal it, okay? The tightness of this ring, it's it just not good, okay? Enough said. All right, now that that's in, and there's a hot and cold marking on this cartridge, okay? And if you got the water lines hooked up correctly, cold is on the right, hot is on the left, all right? Let's do the shower, the, not the shower, the tub spigot. Now, I briefly, during the unboxing, showed you guys this awesome, let me get closer, little brass adapter that goes on. Um, you can sweat it on. If you do sweat it on, make sure to take the rubber O-ring off first, of course. Um, but we're going to thread it on to the galvanized pipe. All right, this allows um, when we put the actual spout on to get that perfect distance between the spout and the tub and the shower wall. Okay, so it's not like a gap because you just can't get the pipe the right length. This actually is an awesome thing that only Delta has that I know of. All right, so how do you pick the right size nipple to come out of the wall? All right, on the package, the plastic wrapper on this says that the the nipple coming out of the wall, out of the finished wall, needs to be out at a half inch to an inch and a quarter in length. Okay, so that's awesome. So I've got a three inch nipple here. So I'm gonna quickly wrap some tape on. And let's see if I, after I get it in, that I've got the right distance coming out of the wall. Alright, I got it snugged up. So let's manage it before we go any further. We're gonna go ahead and test it out. So I'm gonna wrap some tape. Alright, I'm gonna try to wrap some tape around here. Alright, there we go. Now let's put this fitting on. Okay, now to help out with things, I like using a little bit of silicone grease. Uh, you can find this, you should go find this in, in the uh, faucet repair section of your uh, plumbing store. I also added the O-rings to the cartridge before I put that in. Okay, I'm just going to kind of lube it up there so it can... It just helps with the slide any better. Alright, now let's throw this guy on and see if I'm too long or not. Okay, perfect. Um, like I said, I was a little more inch and a quarter. I was close to an inch and a half. So I guess that worked okay because that's perfect. It's just touching the wall there and it, it didn't stop. If, you, if I cranked it like two more times, it ended up stopping. So we definitely maxed out the range there. But there we go. That's perfect. 
Now let's assemble the, uh, the rest of the faucet area here where the handle goes. We'll do that real quick. Okay, so in this part here, what we're going to need is the big trim plate, okay, the handle, and I got the metal handle because I think the acrylic handle is stupid. Okay, and these two long sand steel screws, which hold the trim plate on, of course. Um, Allen wrench, that's for the handle. And then we have the handle, that you call it a scutcheon or the flange, whatever you want to call it, and this big O-ring, okay. Oops. <clears throat> okay, so the big O-ring, you guys can see down in here, you just put it over the, over the faucet and just on the other side of the retainer ring, okay. And that just helps hold this in place. So you slide this in, it goes over the O-ring, kind of push it there, and now you can see it kind of slides, but it, the O-ring is holding it in place. Real simple thing, it works really well, okay? All right, next we're gonna need the trim plate. Slide that over. Try to square it up so that these screws hit the, uh, hit the holes. Oh, wow, I got lucky. The better you get this squared up, the easier it is to find these screw holes. Okay, there we go. Sometimes you gotta pull the plate back and kind of play around with it. And this has a foam seal behind it. And if you guys look really close, there should be a gap in the foam seal down here at the very bottom. That's supposed to be there. That's in case water does get behind here. It doesn't pool in there. It'll just drain out, okay? So if you saw there's a little big gap in the bottom with the foam seal, it's, it's supposed to be there. All right, just, just make it kind of touch up snug against the wall there. You don't want to crunch it down, um, especially if you have a fiberglass or plastic type of surround or, or shower unit, because then you're just like crushing the wall. It's unnecessary. Um, it just needs to be snug like that. Okay. All right. Here's the handle, Allen wrench that came with it. We're just gonna set this in. Okay. Now the handle's in place. Now the uh, the handle flange here. You want to adjust it. It actually should go inside the handle just a little bit. That way everything is overlapping. Um, it doesn't have to if it's hanging. Excuse <coughs> me. Your faucet is, is hung and it's a little bit further inside the wall and this can't go into the handle. Just, just make it the best you can. It is most important that, that this, the flange um, here for going around the handle does go inside the trim plate because there's another seal around there that seals that from getting water in here. Okay, so if the distance on this is, is incorrect, um, it's better to err by putting this and making sure it's sealed in the wall versus close up underneath the handle, okay? That's just for looks on the handle side. Uh, the wall side is important that that seals there. All right, so that's like that, and that's like that. Let's go up there and get the shower head on. All right, guys, now for the shower head. Um, now you can see I've already got my little uh, Shower stop here, we got the tape on it. Alright, and let's put it up here closer. You see that there's one side of the bend that's longer than the other side. The longer side of the bend is the one that goes into the wall, okay? And then I've already got my little uh, discussion or flange, whatever you want to call it, trim plate, already in place, okay? Um, I do make special pliers that have no teeth, so they have less of a chance of scratching this. Uh, to be honest, I don't have mine right now, okay, and most people don't have those. So I'm using standard slip joint pliers. I'm going to put it in. The trick is, which I'm going to show you up here up close, okay, is when you're doing it into the wall, you keep it as close to the wall as possible. You don't grab the pliers way out here. You make sure that it's as close to the wall as possible, and the trim plate should cover any of the scratches, really, okay? That's my little, my little pro tip right there. Okay, and yes, I am balancing on the edge of the tub. But no, I don't need any comments saying that I'm dangerous. Now, do give you some room on the trim plate. Push it back when you're putting this in. 
because the edges can be a little sharp and you'll get like um, sheet metal cuts, which are like paper cuts only deeper. So give yourself some room on that trim plate. All right, now like I said, I keep the pliers tied up against the wall. So that any of the scratches on the pipe should be hidden by our trim plate. Try to make sure that it's square so that it's coming down the center of the tub. And boom. Alright, got a little bit of something there. And there are no scratches that are showing. Nearly, they're very close, but they're not showing. Already got that, got some thread tape on that. Luckily I have a shower head in my pocket. Oh. Alright, now these ones here. Uh, this specific model of Delta, um, the end nut here where it screws on, is actually still metal, which is important. Uh, now I don't need to crank it on tight, but I can put pretty, yeah, I can put standard pressure on it. A lot of shower heads these days, this is plastic, okay, and they might have a rubber washer in there. If that's the shower you're putting together, which might be a little bit different than this one, be very careful when you put that on because you will crack it, okay. You basically want to hand tighten it and maybe add like another half a turn by the wrench or a quarter turn or something like that um, so that it doesn't leak. But if you go too far, it just, it just cracks every time. Every time. I, I, hate, I hate having plastic nuts on the shower heads. Okay. Snug. Now, of course, now I know out of experience I've done a lot of this exact faucet, but that's tight enough. But now's a good time to go ahead and turn the water on and see if you have any water squirting out here, okay? Alright, everyone, thanks for joining me on this very long installation process of a Delta shower faucet, okay? This was the complete installation from start to finish. I did have a couple of videos in there uh, to help show you how to assemble the PEX pipe and, and do the thread tapes and stuff like that on the galvanized pipes. Uh, you might check out. They did have the pop-ups you would have seen on the top right hand of your screen. Um, I will put links, hopefully I'll remember to put links in the description down below also. So you can click on those videos. Um, I put them there so that in case you don't know how to do it, uh, you can do it for those of you who already know how to assemble that kind of stuff. Then whatever. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it answered questions for you, guided you through the process better than the instruction manual. And hopefully it wasn't excessively too lengthy. Guys, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, Great